Look at this, this is mad. You can see a massive chunk of spectrum. Someone's transmitting there. What was that? Welcome back to the channel, guys. This is the Tiny SA Ultra, and I reckon this is one of the most exciting things to come out recently. Check this out. So this device is basically a radio spectrum analyzer. You can see radio waves in real time on this screen. Now this thing will pick up pretty much anything. If it's being transmitted out there in the wild, you know, walkie talkies, radio stations, Wi-Fi, telemetry, you name it, it will pick it up. And that is because it's capable of receiving huge chunks of radio spectrum very, very quickly. This right now is scanning from zero megahertz right the way up to 900 megahertz just in one second. So that allows you to pinpoint any signal on here and then you can listen to it because the Tiny SA Ultra has a listen mode. Look, that's a headphone jack there. It's absolutely mind blowing that you can have a spectrum analyzer in the palm of your hand now. But why would you want to do this? I mean, it's no secret now that obviously most signals out there are digital and you can't really listen to them but that's not strictly true because there's still a lot of stuff you can listen to with this little 100 pound device so let's have a play then that's what radio is all about so we've got a tiny sa ultra here i've got a little adapter here that converts the sma plug on the back of this tiny sa um, to a so239 so we can plug in my big antenna i mean you don't need a massive antenna but I have one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it. I mean, potentially, if you don't have an antenna outside, you could use your TV aerial, in theory. Right, so this plug goes to my outdoor antenna, so I'm just gonna plug that in there. And look at the screen, it immediately fills up with loads of signals. How interesting. So there are loads of settings in this device, which can be a little bit intimidating, but basically, it's quite simple to start with. You can just enter your frequency range here. So I've got here start zero, um, and stop 800, which most of the stuff you're gonna to wanna to listen to is gonna be in between those ranges there. Um, now, if we go back one section here, the other thing that I've done here is I've gone into level and I've turned on the LNA, which is basically a low noise amplifier. So if you turn that off, your signals are gonna be reduced dramatically. So it's kind of, you kind of need that on really to actually start receiving stuff. Now, we can start exploring and looking around. On the top here, you've got like a kind of rocker switch which you can move use to move the cursor around so you can see this cursor moving around with a little one number on but you can kind of move to the peaks of the signal and then you can actually see what the frequency is on the top here so 99.7 megahertz and there's another strong one at 90.8 now most people are probably going to know what that is it's the fm broadcast band isn't it so these signals in this little section here are the fm broadcast stations Let's have a listen. So I'm now feeding the audio from the Tiny SA Ultra into a little portable speaker. And what we can do here is we can go into the menu, we can go level, and then we can go listen. There you go. Okay, it's not crystal clear because it's probably slightly off frequency, but nevertheless, you can hear it. It's so cool. Now we can get a bit more precise with this. If we actually change the frequency so that it's only on the broadcast band. So if we start at 80 megahertz, just get that in there. And then we end, we stop at 108. That's basically the FM dial megahertz. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stop the listening because obviously the display sort of like um, pauses. So now you can see these are the FM stations. So this is, this is the whole, whole FM broadcast band. So obviously there's nothing in this bottom portion, sort of the action really starts happening up the top here. So if we get onto one of these here and then we turn the listen back on, we should be able to hear something a bit clearer. There we go. And then you can just sort of scan through. You have to kind of have to do this bit by bit to get it in the right place. There you go, once so you can see, it's a lot clearer now. So as you can start to see, the possibilities for this are absolutely endless. Let's do some more experimentation. Okay, so now I'm visualizing 400 to 540 megahertz. Um, and you can see, look, there's lots of different pulses going on. There's all this sort of activity around here. These are, I think, are the digital TV channels at the top here, like the multiplexes for that. Um, this is obviously some sort of telemetry or something like that. But what we can do, we can actually take a little PMR 446 radio here and we can key up and you can see, there it is. And you can see there on the waterfall, you can basically just see those two little red blips. 
Now what's cool about this is it kind of draws your attention to signals that are popping up. So you can easily kind of go, oh, there's something there that was quite strong. I'll go there and have a listen. So to give you a bit more of a demonstration of that, this is the UK Airband. So basically look, all these signals coming in, um, you know, just constantly just ticking in. And obviously we can see that because the bandwidth is so wide, it's 118 to 137. So whilst you could do this with like a cheap SDR dongle, you're not gonna see that amount of spectrum in one go. It's just pretty incredible, really. Now, obviously, I should give a little disclaimer here. You're not technically allowed to listen to anything that isn't intended for your ears. So that goes for the whole radio spectrum. So technically, you're not really supposed to scan and listen. But if you're a radio amateur, this is quite a useful tool. Because us radio hams have got a fascination with spotting signals that we haven't seen before. So you can see here, we've got the two meter amateur band 144 to 147 megahertz here. It actually goes to 146, but there is a special allocation up to 147, I believe, at the moment. So here we can see all these little signals. Um, we've got a repeater here. Uh, that looks like a repeater. We've got um, a beacon as well. Um, we've got like a lot of kind of like, you know, very low signals there as well. Maybe some APRS, stuff like that. If we key up a repeater, which I can do on this other radio here, GB3AL, so you get a bit of a spike from my transmitter. But then you can see the repeater there just coming in nice and strong. So this is a fantastic way to have a pretty cheap SDR and it's pretty sensitive as well with the low noise amplifier on. You can just sort of have that sitting there and then you can spot stuff. And this little tiny SA will scan a wider bandwidth than my £2,000 Icon IC9700. It's absolutely fascinating stuff, the technology we've got now versus what we used to have. For example, we used to use little radios like this little Kenwood or, or like an Alinko scanner where you'd just flick around and you'd maybe push a button to get this thing to just increment and go up in frequency or down in frequency and then it would stop when it found something. But now, in the palm of our hand, we can see and visualise massive chunks of spectrum and just go and find those signals and then go and listen to them. And you can even listen to them on this that's what's crazy and no whilst there isn't technically as much stuff out there to listen to like there used to be it was amazing imagine having this sort of stuff back in the old days guys you'll remember there are things to listen to still and something like this can actually make your job of finding those signals a lot easier and i'll leave it to you guys in the comments to let me know what interesting stuff you found this is going to be good anyway guys hope you've enjoyed this one catch you next time